hey, drivers understand the need for changing their engine oil, and most of them understand the need for changing things like transmission fluid. But what about the other underhood fluids? Brake fluid in particular seems to raise a lot of different responses when you ask techs how often it should be serviced and how it should be checked. Uncovering the myths and the facts is the topic for today's edition of The Trainer. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Motor Rage video series, The Trainer. You know, OEMs list a maintenance schedule for nearly every system on their car based on time and mileage, including most of the fluids. Brake fluid, though, is inconsistent among manufacturers. Most domestics don't recommend any type of service interval, while many of the European and Asian makes do. Does that mean that there's something special about the domestics and Ford, Chrysler, and GM that we don't have to worry about the brake fluid? Or are the Europeans and Asians just trying to add some wallet flushing procedure to their service menus? Well, why don't we take a look and find out the facts about testing and servicing brake fluid? Well, let's dispel this first myth very quickly. You can't judge brake fluid condition by a visual inspection. Now, brake fluid, at least dot three and dot four, which is the most typically used in automotive applications, is generally clear in nature, but it's not unusual to see it pretty dark and many customers master cylinders. Does this mean the fluid's bad? Not necessarily. A lot of times the reason for that discoloration can be the fluid type or manufacturer. It could be thermal related, in other words, because of the heat generated in the braking system, or it could, could just be dye that's leaching off of the seals from the components and mixing with the fluid to darken the color. This Kia here is a good example. Okay, this Kia Forte is a 2010 model with almost 20,000 miles on the clock. Yet the color of the fluid is nearly as clear as the day when it first rolled off the showroom floor. But does that mean the fluid's good or not good? Well, let's continue and we'll find out together. Hey, while we're taking a look at the master cylinder reservoir in this Kia, note the fluid level. It's right between the minimum and maximum markings on the reservoir. Do I want to add fluid to it? No, not on your life, and here's why. That's a safety feature built into the braking system. As the caliper pistons move outward as the pads wear, the space behind them has to be taken up with something. That's the fluid from the reservoir. So what we have is a visual indication of the brake system wear based on that level. If the level is down to the minimum marks, that means the system needs to be inspected for possible service. The pads are likely worn out. If you just top off the fluid for your customer, you may think you're doing them a service, but you're taking away that advanced warning for them. The brake warning light's not gonna come on when it's supposed to. The, a customer could very well run those brake pads right metal to metal, causing a lot more damage and a lot more costly repair than it would have otherwise. So don't top off the brake fluid reservoir. Advise your customer the low fluid level and the need to inspect the system for worn parts. Hey, what a segue, right? First we're talking about filling up the fluid in the master cylinder. Now we're going to talk about brake fluid itself. You know, brake fluid, most of you already know, is hygroscopic, or at least the dot three, dot four that's commonly used in automotive applications. What does that mean? It means it readily absorbs moisture. In fact, it can suck the moisture right out of the atmosphere surrounding the bottle, which means you always wanna make sure you keep this seal tight in between use to keep it fresh. Why is that important? Well, moisture into the brake fluid can change the boiling point. Did you know that this uh, brake fluid can absorb 2% of its volume in water in just 12 months? And the two specs listed, dry boiling point, meaning fresh from the factory fluid, and wet boiling point is only a 3% by volume of water difference, makes a big difference. Why is that important? Hey, brakes work by changing energy of motion into heat energy. That generates a lot of temperature in all the brake related components, especially those down right at the wheel where all the action's taking place. If the boiling point drops, then it's possible for that fluid to actually start to boil and vapor pockets to form. And when that happens, you get pedal fade and you get reduced stopping power. So certainly, too much moisture in the brake fluid is a concern that we need to check for. You know, moisture content was considered a really big deal, so much so that the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration actually conducted a study many years ago relating the amount of moisture contained in brake fluid and brake fade related accidents. 
That's really, I think, what put it on the, on the horizon for professional technicians all across this country. And one of the reasons that you still see it mentioned in tech articles and publications on the web and in various trade publications and so forth. Let's talk about the reality for a moment. First, what about moisture in the system? How are you gonna test for that? There used to be test strips available and you would just simply dip them into the fluid, wait a few minutes and then read the result much like the coolant test strips and some other products that we're going to show you a little later on. The problem with that though, is that there's moisture in the air. So if you didn't hit that, that clock right on the second, the test results from that test strip could be wrong, could be an error. And if they were left in an unsealed container, well then the whole batch of test strips was no good. So I think it's very rare that you would even find these on the market anymore. So that leaves two other ways to test for moisture. One is an electrical conductivity test. And in this test, you'll see a, a pen-like device with two electrodes that's inserted into the brake fluid and then a button's pressed to see if there's any conductivity. Of course, moisture is conductive and that changes the conductivity of the fluid. That's what the test result is based on. However, there are other things that can affect that as well. So again, a test that's maybe or maybe not accurate. The third way to test it, and another common uh, use, is to check the actual physical boiling point of the fluid. And we do that with a tester, something like this OTC unit. Let's show you how it works. To use this tester, it has its own power source, it's connected to the battery, and it's inserted so the probe is below the level of fluid in the master cylinder. Then we're gonna hold the button on, and the machine will count us off. And what it's actually doing is it's warming up the fluid, and it's actually gonna measure the boiling point of the fluid in the reservoir. Of course, like we said, moisture in the fluid will reduce the boiling point. This gives us an indication of what the condition of the fluid is overall. Now what this tester is actually doing is heating the fluid to the boiling point in the master cylinder and measuring the temperature it takes to get it to do that. In this case, 421 degrees. That's compared to the 3% wet spec for dot three of 284 degrees. And from that we can tell what type of moisture content we have in the fluid. Now from the test results from the moisture tester, we can pretty much rest assured that there's not too high a moisture content in this brake fluid yet. The best results are taken when you perform the test at least twice and average the results. But you know, a lot of things have happened in the 30, 40 years since that National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration test was done. So is really testing moisture the only or necessarily best way to test brake fluid? Let's find out. You know, that NHTSA test that I told you about was done back in the mid 70s. And technology has changed a lot since then. The engineers who make these cars know as much about the moisture problem as anyone does, and they made a lot of changes to the system to reduce the chance of moisture intrusion into the systems. In fact, in another study done by Ford Motor Company, of all the vehicles they tested, less than 1% showed excessive moisture in them. Does that mean the brake fluid's okay? No, not at all. If you watched our coolant video, you understand that there's a lot of different metals that make up the brake system and its components and any fluid in contact with a metal can lead to corrosion. And just like coolant, uh, the brake fluid has an inhibitor package to protect the system from corrosion. That does not last forever. And you can't judge what that corrosion inhibitor package is just based on visual inspection or the amount of moisture present. In fact, it's been found that if a system has sufficient corrosion inhibitor protection, it can handle up to 5% moisture content without any problems in terms of damage to the system. But if that inhibitor package drops to next to nothing, as little as 1% moisture content can wreak havoc inside those components. And how do you test for it? It's very simple, with a little test strip. The test strip is very easy to use and it reacts to the copper content in the system. I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in just a moment. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the test strip and we're going to insert the pad into the brake fluid for just a couple of seconds and then shake off the excess. And now we're going to wait 60 to 120 seconds for the reaction to take place. What's that you said, P? Copper? Where's the copper come from? 
Well, there's a lot of tubing in that system, isn't there? And that's where the copper comes from. It's one of the first metals to start to corrode and decompose once that fluid is added to the system. It's also been proven that it's something that we can measure using these test strips, and it's directly proportional to the health of the inhibitor package. When the copper content gets too high, above 200 parts per million, now it's time to service that fluid and change uh, uh, the system for your customer's benefit. If it's left alone, the inhibitor package health is low, now the major components are gonna to start to be attacked. That's the wheel uh, calipers, the pistons, the wheel cylinders, and all those expensive ABS parts. So by checking the copper content with a test strip, we can head off those problems and know with assurance that we need to recommend a service to our customer. So you may be wondering about the health of the Kia. Well, the Kia turned out to work just fine. Let me show you what the test pad looks like. Okay, this is the sample that we took from the Kia. You can see that the pad reacted very little. So there's very little copper uh, content in this brake fluid. And even though the car's, I mean, going almost on three years old based on model year, this fluid's still good, no need for service. Now let's just take a comparison to another vehicle we tested while we were here to show you the difference. This is a Honda model where the fluid actually had a greenish tint to the fluid. And you can see that the copper content is excessive, well over 300 parts per million. That fluid has served its useful purpose a long, long time ago. Okay. Now I'm sure there are a variety of sources that you can get these test strips from. I do want to take a moment to thank the folks over at Phoenix Systems, the makers of the Phoenix Injector, for sending those to me. And you can order them from them as well by going on to www.breakbleeder.com. Now, if you do find that the copper content's too much, you do have a legitimate reason to recommend a complete flush to your customer. This is one great tool for doing it. It's the Phoenix Injector, and it can do a, a fluid injection, either reverse or pressure bleed from the top. Uh, you can use a vacuum bleeder, whatever tool is your preference to make sure you get all the old fluid contaminants out and replaced with fresh, clean fluid. Make sure you also get any debris, or as much of the debris as possible as you can, out of the master cylinder reservoir while you're performing that service. And to make sure you can show your customer that the service was worth what you're charging, do a second test with the same strip. You should find that it tests negative, like the original strip we showed you on the Kia. Well, that's all the time we got for this edition of The Trainer. I'm Pete Meyer, we'll see you next month.